All right, so I wanted to talk about um, how to learn stochastic calculus just from uh, ordinary calculus. So I've been reading this book here for uh, about, I'm not sure, be about six or so months, uh, about five months, I think, five, five to six months, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, there is a second edition out, and uh, it apparently is uh, much more... Um, uh, you know, detailed and uh, goes over uh, more things uh, in depth. From what I remember, I just skimmed through it. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on this one yet. Um, so this book, uh, it, the aims of it, according to the author here on uh, the preface, it is to, you know, analogize as much of uh, ordinary calculus to stochastic calculus and kind of just uh, have you see the, uh, you know, here we go. Here. Assumes presentation of mimic similar properties to deterministic calculus as much as possible, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, okay, so, you know, just knowing your calculus, uh, you know, your elementary calculus uh, to, you know, your integration techniques, you know, Cal2 stuff, and then your multivariable calculus, uh, like Cal3, you know, all of that you're going to need for this book here. And so here I'm on, uh, I'm on, what is this shit, uh, Google, right? And you can actually read a big chunk of the book here uh, up to page 53. So that's a pretty good chunk of this book that you can read here uh, just from Google. Okay, so I have... I'll just start off uh, like a little mini review for each chapter. Okay, so here, this chapter took me a really long time. Uh, between chapters two and three, I was probably stuck in them for, uh, so, okay, so actually I've been reading this book for about six months or so. And these two, these two chapters, two and three, took me about, you know, four and a half, five months to finish. These were rough. Um, I do have a background in probability and statistics, uh, but that was a while ago, and uh, I'll be honest, I'm kind of like, I don't remember uh, any of it anymore, uh, but you can uh, learn the subject from this book, uh, you know, probability theory, um, and what, what I would have liked, I'll be honest, um, is I would have liked some, you know, computational examples or like real life examples, um, you know, showing you know, how it's actually used, uh, you know, how these these concepts are actually used. Um, okay, so here it looks, and again, I've, I've kind of just skimmed through this, and it looks like here, he kind of does give you a little bit of an example here. Um, I thought that this change of measure uh, was a, you know, if you continue your work on this subject, this is actually going to be a little bit more important. I would have liked for him to, you know, go over this a little bit more. I don't think this is all that important in this book specifically. Um, but then again, like I, I did skip, I'll, I'll be on hundred percent honest. Like I did skip some chapters here because, and even some sections, cause I really just wanted to get to, um, uh, the stochastic cal uh, calculus part. So what I did end up skipping was I ended up skipping um, here from the Poisson process down, uh, even though I did, I am aware that I am, uh, you know, skipping over some very important uh, topics like uh, sub-Martingales and the, uh, okay, from here, the Poisson process, uh, from, you know, inter-arrival times, waiting times, uh, sub-Martingales and so on. Uh, I did skip on uh, some of those, so then consequently when I go over here, I have to skip on the Poisson sections, but, you know, I'm planning on, on going back eventually. So these these two sections are uh, are pretty good. Uh, my beef, my you know my main beef with this uh, chapter two is a uh, and even chapter one also. Um, if you already know you're going to learn this subject, like you you know you're not going to quit. You're going to learn it one way or the other. You can just skip this subject this this chapter altogether. Um, it just kind of gives you, uh, you know, motivation why you should learn the subject or why it's important, you know, fields in which it's applicable. Um, this is important, but he talks about it anyways in uh, chapter four right here. Okay, so 
Um, he uses, and this is especially important for like the business majors here, and that is um, he, he really does have a bad habit, and he does it here on this uh, first chapter too, of defining or using words uh, without defining them first. Okay, so here he says C1 differentiable function, or okay, so here he, here he defines it. Uh, on the first edition, he does not. A compact interval, he doesn't define that either. Um, I don't know why he does that. And that's my other, my other um, you know, critique is that sometimes he kind of forgets, in my opinion, who uh, this, this book is written for. And it seems like this section is very much, or, or this section, yeah, on uh, variation is uh, much more wordier than on the first edition, which is great because I thought it was very poor. Uh, on the first edition, but he kind of forgets, I think, who he who he writes for sometimes. But this is my review is mostly based off of the first edition. It looks like a lot of this is is fixed on the second. Uh, you know, if if you look at, you know, if you've ever done work like in uh, like some of the more like if you've taken a, a proof based class, right, like analysis or topology, like you know that is different from when you took calculus one, right? Like when you took calculus one. They're asking you to do like a bunch of you know cookie cutter problems like they're all kind of the same uh you know for any given section whereas like on uh like in a class on uh, like a proof based class like they'll ask you to verify certain results or show a result or prove a theorem this that and the other um and this this book he kind of writes in a similar way like uh you know as one of like the proof based classes and you know not even in just exclusively in what he asks of you but you know the exposition right he kind of just gives you um as little detail as possible uh and he tries to have you derive the rest of it like the you know the details the rest of the details from the exercises and so he does give you uh, a lot of exercises uh in text at, at least he did uh, in the first edition, but I can't seem to see any um, exercises here. I, I believe I guess he must have. Okay, now here they are still sprinkled inside the text, which is great. So th this is a great practice because it, it slows down your reading, and for the most part, it's supposed to, um, you know, mean that up until that point that you got that exercise, you should be able to solve it with just the knowledge that you had. Right, so you shouldn't have to go on to the following section or the following section uh, or the section after that uh, to solve this exercise. You should be able to do it just from what you've read up until that point. Although for, for again, the first edition of that book, that's not always the case. Um, you know, one situation in particular, he uh, asks us to uh, show some result in which we are required to use the squeeze theorem, but then he doesn't actually use uh, the squeeze theorem until the following page and although you know we limit theorems like the squeeze theorem and like a, a, I think a couple of other ones are from you know calculus one elementary calculus stuff I have a hard time believing that a business major with, which is definitely a target audience for this book is going to I have a hard time believing that a, a business major is going to use that the first time you know um, without, without having seen it first right you know, they're going to try it, they're going to go to the back of the book to the solutions, and they're going to say, oh, I remember the squeeze theorem. Okay. Um, so, again, I don't know if he does that here in this, um, in this book, um, but in the first edition he did. Okay, so this is, this is cool here. Um, I didn't, okay, here, a, a mechanical interpretation. Okay, so he does give you, like, a little example here, which is great. I love this. Like he's, he's really moving in the right direction, I believe, uh, with this book. Um, on distributions, I think he could have uh, given a little bit more of a, you know, connection to, you know, real life scenarios or real life situations, um, even like super basic ones that maybe aren't super, super realistic, but something maybe along the lines of like what an engineer would see or, you know, something like that. Um, that, that would have been cool. Okay, so... Also, I thought this section on a, um, where is it here? On conditional expectation needed a little bit of work. I, I don't think we have access to it here, but it is what it is. Okay, so I'll move on to, oh, also uh, what I'll say about uh, this 
uh, section or this chapter is, uh, and even with the the, the, uh, the following chapter, chapter three, some of the solutions are are kind of you know not the best. Uh, but from what I remember reading, he did give you, he does give you on the second edition, he does give you like every single hits uh, and solutions to every single uh, exercise, which is great. But some of them I think need to be wordier. Um, okay, so here, uh, stochastic processes. Um, I also had a hard time with this, uh, um, this chapter. Um, obviously very important, you know, Brownian motion, you know, eventually when we get to chapters five, six, you know, so on for the rest of the book, you know, we're going to end up using uh, the Brownian motion or we're going to be, we're going to be integrating functions with respect to the Brownian motion. Right. And, uh, you know, so th this is very important. I would have liked uh, some more, I guess, like real life examples uh, here, um, you know, showing, showing where, um, you know, Brownian motion I guess uh, is used, but I know he does, I think on chapter nine, he talks about, you know, how to identify Brownian motions in, um, um, you know, whatever work it is that you're doing. Um, so I guess, I guess, I, I, I guess it's not actually a critique because I think, I think what he is trying to do here, he's just trying to give you the absolute minimum that you need so that you can start learning uh, stochastic calculus as fast as possible. And I think he's actually very successful in that um, because you can actually, you have to read all of this. You can't get away from it. All of this chapter two, you have to read it. You have to know it. Chapter three, um, everything that says Brownian motion on it or Brownian, you have, you have to know it. Um, like this Bessel process, you can skip it. Poisson process, you can skip it. Uh, you can skip, honestly, you can skip the rest of this chapter after Brownian motion with drift um, if you want, but then you're gonna have to skip anytime you see Bessel, Poisson, uh, any of these words here, you're gonna have to skip that in the following sections as well. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I did. I skipped it after uh, here on Poisson, I skipped it all the way down and I was able to, to come uh, down all the way here to stochastic integration. And then, but then again, right, I have to skip Poisson integration here. I believe this section too uh, deals with uh, the Poisson process. I have to skip that too. So yeah, you, you can definitely, uh, and he gives you a little, uh, a little chart in the beginning here of the flow of the content. And I love this. I wish more authors would do this, or at least just tell you, um, you know, what the dependence of the chapters are on each other. Um, okay, so here, stochastic integration. So once you get the stochastic calculus, I think that's when this book really, really shines. Um, so like if you've already taken, you know, uh, at, your, at your university, like you took a class in probability and then you took a class in stochastic processes, you can, you can pretty much just skim over the first, uh, or chapter two and chapter three, and then you can uh, get in here to stochastic integration. It leads right into it, man. Like, it's great. Okay, so this, uh, yeah, this chapter, again, it's where it really shines because this is where he starts to give you a lot of like computational exercises and examples. And I think if he would have done this, um, like in chapter, in these chapters, like he did, how do I say this? If he did what he did here, like in chapters two and three, I think chapters two and three would be much, much better. Um, but they're okay anyways, or, or they're good anyways. So, yeah, this this is a this is a solid chapter. I, I don't really have much to say about it other than that stochastic differentiation. I think that's a short one too. Um, and again, he might have expanded on these in the second edition, uh, but here in the in the first edition, chapter five is actually is actually uh, about twenty pages uh, differentiation. I think it's about um, let's see, 139. Yeah, it's not that long. It's about 10 pages. You know, all, you know this this part of the book is a uh, you know you can move through it pretty fast, like I did. Also, I moved through it pretty quickly. Um, it was a uh, it was enjoyable to read. I'll say that. Um, from what I've read, like from from other people. Um, 
you know, like on Quora and things like that, is that, you know, when you do certain things, like um, with the notation, it's, you know, obviously it's considered like an, an abuse of the notation, but you can still get the correct results provided that you do it properly. And what I mean by that is like this right here. I don't know if it's gonna wanna zoom in, but here, um, you know, so it's not, it, it is informal, right? It's not, you know, you're not gonna get the nitty gritty here. There are other texts that you could go on, like uh, the one by Paolo Baldi. That's like a graduate level uh, text on the subject or even Evans. Um, if you have your measure theory, he goes through it very quick. Uh, that's also a good a good book. Um, okay, so and you could probably get away with reading Evans uh, after reading this, but I don't think you would be able to with uh, Baldi. That that one's that one's a little rough, but he does have the complete solution to every problem. Okay, so I'm about halfway through stochastic differential equations. And again, this, the text is, uh, you know, extremely, extremely st straightforward here. Like, I don't have any problem whatsoever. The, again, the only time I actually struggled with this book was chapters two and three. Um, but yeah, that's, that's as far as I've gotten. I wanted to make this video much, much uh, sooner, but I'm glad that I didn't. I'm glad I, wait, I waited so I could have more positive things to say about it. Because, you know, when I was reading two and three, you know, I had, I had quite... A long list of negative things to say and you know they're not that important to me anymore um, but you know part of math is just struggling right like it's hard it's difficult okay I haven't I haven't read um, all of these I've skimmed a little bit through uh, this section here on the um, I don't re quite remember which one it is but it's like a uh, recognizing recognizing uh, Brownian motions and then uh, this uh, section on the directional derivative which you should have learned in Cal 3 but it's like a nice little uh, review I think which is also important an important idea like if you've read uh, you know I just started to, to, to read it uh, Evans uh, partial differential equations you know in the beginning of the second chapter he does you know utilize this idea of the directional derivative um, I believe it's even more important, or it's it's still important even later on in the text. Um, yeah, this book he added two more chapters on it on uh, applications, which is great. Um, okay, so this is new too. I haven't seen this review problems. That's cool. Uh, I don't know what that is exactly, but you know, if you come here on uh, the Google Play books, uh, you you can start reading the book. You can start reading the book, and I recommend that you try it, and if you like it, go ahead and buy the book. It's cool, man. All right, that'll do it for this one. See you.